This is how I tie my cormorants. I know there's opening videos out there of cormorants, uh, but this is how I tie my particular cormorants. Size 10 barbless hook. You can tie these on 10s or 12s. I prefer 10s. However, I do go down to 12s occasionally. Now, I always tie with white thread. Don't ask us why, I've just got a preference for white thread. As normal, put a thread base right down the layer, right the way down the hook. I like a good thread base, it stops the it stops everything spinning. Silver wire for the rib. And mirage for the body. I want no build up on the body, hence I'm using a, a 6 o thread. I'll take my thread up to leave, leave enough at the head. The Mirage, I'll just wrap it around one way. Doesn't make any difference whether you wrap it towards yourself or that way. It's personal preference. Wrap the Mirage down the, to the thread. Tie it off. Now whichever way you've wrapped the Mirage, you wrap your ribbon the opposite way. Because I've wrapped my Mirage towards this, the ribbon will go the opposite way. Watch around the hook and just rip it. I'm not going to tell you how many you need to have because it doesn't really matter as long as it, the rib's there for protection. It's not really to make the fly look segmented, as a lot of folk will tell you. Um, it's to protect the body. Right, <clears throat> that's pretty straightforward. At this point, I'll make sure I've got wax on my thread. On my thread. As it helps everything grip. Now on this version of it I am going to put um, a thorax of the same colour. You could use a different colour but for this demonstration purposes I'm going to use the same thorax. And the part of the marabou I'm using is the spindly bits at the top, the very very fine bits, the bits you tend not to use. If I'm tying flies what I tend to do <coughs> When I get to that there, that one's been stripped. I've used all the good fibres on lures and etc. I'll keep these bits for my cormorants. It's the same with the bits down the bottom. I keep them now short. I use them for the cormorants. Now this bit here is for the thorax. Now what I need out of there is only about five or six fibres. You can see them there. There's not many there. Now I'm going to lick that just to bring them all together. And I'm going to cut the points off. Lick that so that they all stick together. I'm just going to tie that in there. How far you come back, I'm not going to say a quarter of an inch, so many mil, it's all down to you. The uh, <coughs> depends on how, how much thorax you want. I usually take it, I don't know what that is. Right now, on this bit here, 
what I tend to do is I'll spin the marabou in my fingers. I'm just spinning, you can see it spinning. That's all I'm doing. And you can see the fibres standing like hackles. Now at this point I'll take hackle pliers. Now you notice how I've left the thread hanging at the back. I haven't taken it forward. The reason for that is I preferred to move forward as I'm wrapping round and that way as I'm moving up the thread will move along. This keeps me turns each turn very very close. Now you can just start to see the hackles the fibres starting to stick out like a hackle. Now just stroke them back turn in front stroke them back a bit turn in front. It's a bit like putting fritz on Take them back and turn in front. Take it to the top. Over two. And one in front. Now the reason I take it to the top is if you take it to the side and you cut it off, you can have a piece sticking out of the side and it, side and it can be um, it can look a little bit horrible. Now if you take it to the top you're going to put a marabou ring, ring, wing over the top which will hide that. So you don't have to be too careful. Stroke them fibres back and make sure I've got some wax on my thread. Stroke them fibres back. Take it from the eye all the way back. It's worth taking your time when you do this. Don't rush it. There's no prizes for rushing it. Now you can virtually see that. How the, the fibres are all lying back. Now in the water those fibres are because they're from taken from the top of the marabou, the really thin wispy ones, they will move around like little legs on the on the creature you're trying to imitate. Now <clears throat> for the wing once again I'm going to use oh, I do that. once again I'm going to use the same marabou and I'm going to take a piece from the top end and I'm only going to take so many fibres. You can see there's not a lot of fibres there but you can see it's the thin wispy ones. A saliva on my fingers. Strip the bits down and just make sure it's square. Now you can tie it to the back of the eye so there's nothing to cut. What I tend to do is I tend to take it over the front and look down and cinch down hard. And once I've got three or four turns on it, I'll now lift that back. And if I cut her on an angle with the eye, I'm left with no, just a little bit. Bit confined here. That's it. Now, because I've got wax on my thread, <coughs> as I'm going forward, it's not going to slip down. <laughs> it's going to put that thread over the marabou. Now, I'm putting this fairly tight because I do not want the marabou to slip. And do a whip finish.
and you can make the head any colour you want. There's a number of ways of doing it. You can use permanent marker, you just colour it in, any colour you want. Or you can do what I do, I use black thread. But before I do that, what I'll do is I'll nip this wing and how the, the length I use, and it, once again it's entirely up to you, you can make it longer if you want or shorter, but the length I use I tend to take my finger and thumb and I grip it just past the bend of the hook, which is going to be there. You see that? So once again, grip it there. Don't cut, tear. You see how I've tore it off and it gives a nice, a nice wing. Now that bit there, I won't throw away. I can get another wing out of that. And I'm going to show you another way I do it without the thorax. So I'm going to put that to one side. Now, I use, as I've said, I use black thread for the head. I prefer black. Now I'll make sure that my thread is well waxed. I always wax my thread. Let's get that all manageable. Now once again with this take your time. Start at the bottom and just wind it up very very slowly. Making sure you're on touch and turns so you don't see any of the white. Now I can't see on the other side, obviously, but what I'll do is I will check when I get to the top. Now on this side it, there's no white thread shown, so hopefully there'll be none on the other side. But before I do anything, I'll have a quick check. No, oh, it's black, tell me. Now, but finish. And it's worth taking that little bit extra time to make the black top, I personally think. Yes, I could have used and then just all that's left to do is varnish the head. But you'll have seen a million and one varnish heads, so I'm not even gonna bother doing that. Now what I'll do is I'll show you the other version. I'll just whip through this fairly quickly. Don't need to talk through it because it's it's pretty much the same as what you've just seen. Putting the body on and everything's exactly the same. Put the thread base down. Silver wire for the rib. And mirage for the body. A lot of people when they're making cormorants, <coughs> what they'll do is they'll varnish the body. Oops, they'll varnish the body uh, for protection. But to be honest with you, this. This mirage that I'm using is quite thick, um, it's quite strong, With I find with the silver rib, the ribbon wire uh, gives it more than enough protection. I don't want to be putting loads and loads of varnish on it, I'm going to keep the profile slim. Now I'm, if you notice on this version, I'm taking the, the mirage further up the the hook before I tie it off and the reason for this is because there's no thorax to go on it's literally going to be a wing and this I, I do fish a lot of um, 
components without the thorax but I also like them with the thorax. One else, I just find that with the thorax it acts as a sort of a mini a mini lure if you like. Once again I've took the mirage towards us so I take the ribbon the opposite way. And I'm not going to count the ribs, I'm just going to put them so far apart. So that it protects the mirage underneath. One, two, three. <coughs> Notice I cut the wire. I've just got old scissors, so I tend to cut the wire rather than try and snap it off by the twizzle method. I'll just cut it. Right. Now, <clears throat> on the last fly I've done, this is where I put the hackle, the thorax in. This time I'm just going to put a wing on the top. And I'm going to use the piece that I said I had left over, which is that. And I'm going to tie that in as the wing. I find with, and I'm going to strip it down again. Just square it off. I find that with the cormorant, I'll tell you what I did forget, plenty of wax on. Again, doing the head, just take your time and cover any of the marabou. Okay, and just do a whip finish. One, two, four. And it's pretty much the same as the the last version I showed you. I'll take the marabou off now. Same length. Just take it off. And that's it. Just a straight one. And that's it. And you can use a marker once again um, to change the head, change the colour of the head, leave it white if you wanted. I like a black head but what I'm going to do now is make sure I've got plenty of wax on my thread. Just put this Take me time coming up because I've waxed it. You can virtually get touch and turns without any problem at all. Even because of the slight incline, even going backwards like that. And if you take your time, you'll get a much better finish. Again, this is the four turn whip finish. Three, four. Cinch it down. And that is how I tie my cormorants. You could have that a little bit shorter if you want. Now, when that gets wet, obviously, I'll put a little bit varnish on that. I didn't put it on the other one because I was trying to save a little bit of time. I'm just going to put a touch of varnish on that. When that dries and soaks in, that fly will be finished. And 
that's how I fish the cormorant. Sorry, that's how I tie the cormorant. Now you can see the difference between the two of them. One's got a, a hackle thorax and one's without. Well, I hope this was of some use to you. And thanks very much for watching.